Okay. Okay, excellent. Sorry. Okay, so uh, hello yes. everyone, um, and um, uh, uh, nice meeting you. And let me thank the the organizer for all the organization and all the work they are doing to support us. My name is Adolfo Villaferita. Um, I'm teaching at the University of Trento. I'm also work. Uh, we'll shortly be working at Share.Tech, which is a uh, non-profit organization developing uh, applications to um, um, recover surplus food. But the, the, the reason of the talk today and the, the reason I'm here today is to talk about my experience in moving from Jekyll, a static website generator, to org mode. And the reason uh, uh, I moved to org mode is to have better support support for literate programming on the websites uh, uh, at the University of Trento, where we make available the content for the, the students. Uh, OK, so uh, first of all, uh, what is a, a static website generator? It is basically a tool which allows you to generate HTML files out of text files containing basically two types of information, metadata and uh, content. The metadata is, uh, let's say, uh, a set of key pairs so describing the, the content of the file, such as the title, author, uh, tags, and so on and so forth. And the content is what you actually want to, to get published on the, on the internet in the HTML file. And uh, usually the content is written in some kind of uh, um, uh, markup language, such as Markdown or uh, possibly uh, org, uh, org mode. And um, well, Jekyll is a very popular web, uh, site, uh, st uh, static website generator. It is written in Ruby. And what it does, it, it, it systematically, let's say, uh, transforms all the input files by uh, making the content content into HTML and systematically applying a template in order to generate the HTML files, which you can then deploy on your uh, server of choice to make them available on the, on the internet. And um, one of the features uh, most, uh, uh, well, I would say all uh, uh, static website generators have uh, is uh, that of being able to, let's say, collect the metadata information uh, of the files uh, uh, being part of your of your project. And the reason they do that is because um, you sometimes want to generate pages based on the content of your um, of your projects, such as, for instance, the the list of posts you have recently published, or maybe the list of tags uh, you uh, have defined for your post, and, and so on and so forth. So, uh, so uh, Jekyll uh, pro, uh, gives the possibility of generating this kind of dynamic uh, content by using Liquid, which is a um, templating language uh, which uh, looks like these. Um, so basically, you you have uh, all the constructs you can expect in a programming language. This, for instance, is a force cycle uh, which uh, iterates over all the posts uh, or the um, files in a specific directory of the Jekyll project. And uh, for uh, each post, it takes the, the title and the URL and generates a link. Okay, so Jekyll is uh, nice and sweet, but over the years, uh, I started using more and more systematically uh, org mode to write all my files, and I moved from Markdown to org mode. I, I am a long time Emacs user, so I've been using Emacs for 30 years now. So org mode is a more recent discovery, but it is a very nice uh, let's say, discovery I, I made. And the reason I like org, org mode is because, uh, for instance, you can write formulas using MathJax, and you can generate diagrams or, or plots with new plots. And uh, uh, also important is the fact that you have the possibility of, let's say, publishing your documents uh, to multiple ends, backends, such as PDF or uh, maybe reveal presentations or, uh, or HTML.
And uh, this is all made possible by Babel, uh, which is uh, let's, uh, exactly what we just saw in the, the previous talk, uh, um, namely the possibility of executing uh, uh, snippets of code uh, uh, embedded in, in your uh, pages. Um, and org mode can also be used uh, within, uh, let's say, Jekyll. And in fact, there is a, a nice uh, gem, a nice library called Jekyll uh, org, which allows you to use uh, org mode files directly into Jekyll. But when you start using org mode, um, when I started using org mode, I, I realized uh, I could move all my workflow to, to or my publishing workflow to Emacs. And, um, and, uh, and in fact, org mode is also a static website generator because it has got the uh, possibility of publishing um, projects made of org mode files. And uh, one of the nice things uh, about, let's say, the, the publishing features of org mode is that it allows you to define in the org publish project A list uh, all the components which are part of your project. And uh, in a sense, it is uh, also more flexible than Jekyll is uh, because it also allows you, for instance, to, let's say, publish a single file rather than uh, having to recompile everything every time you want to publish your, um, your, your uh, project, your website. However, the, the, there are some shortcomings, I would say, or some, some areas of improvement improvement, let me say. Uh, the first is that, let's say, support for templating is not so obvious as it is, uh, let's say, in Jekyll, even though there are some, uh, let's say, uh, nice extensions such as org uh, THTML, for instance, which allows you to use templates. And um, more important to me uh, was the fact that uh, apparently there is little support for the creation of dynamic content. So I was very curious and very keen to use or mode for, let's say, publishing my blog and my the, the, the courses at the university. But then uh, I had to find a way to, let's say, being able to publish uh, these dynamic pages, finding some kind of a replacement, so to speak, for uh, the liquid uh, the liquid engine. And uh, and the solution was that at hand actually, um, because. Uh, Basically, I realized I could use Bubble for uh, exactly the, 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 this purpose. So rather than using Bubble for generating plots or let's say my R computation or whatever I was using them for, I, I realized I could use Bubble to generate uh, HTML, which could be, let's say, uh, then published uh, um, in, in, in the project. So. Uh, so all I needed to do then was defining some kind of functions, some kind of code in order to read all the org mode, uh, the metadata of all the uh, org mode files of my web project uh, so that I could, uh, let's say, then publish uh, uh, generate the dynamic content. And um, this is a, a snippet taken from uh, 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 one of my uh, uh, HTML projects, uh, which basically shows uh, the way in which uh, I generate the, um, the list of posts on my, on my page. It is uh, exactly how the, the liquid that we saw in a couple of, uh, couple of slides earlier looks like uh, uh, in, uh, in our mode. And basically, uh, what I'm doing, I'm using, uh, I wrote a Ruby script um, which uh, uh, reads all the metadata. So this uh, uh, highlighted code uh, basically loads the script, uh, which is stored uh, externally, and then it collects all the metadata from the org mode files in the current uh, in the current directory. And then the, the following uh, the, the, the code you can see here uh, basically iterate over all the post read uh, at the previous step and it generates um, a, a list with the title and the, uh, and the URLs. And uh, so basically uh, replicating what Jekyll does. So okay. So th there are some, some other things I had to, to deal with in order to, let's say, accommodate my workflow. And, uh, but that was relatively easy in the sense that uh, one of the, 
problem, one of the issues I had to solve was that of, let's say, having a common navigation on, on all my uh, pages, uh, and, but that was easily solved using uh, the include feature. So I basically made available an include with all the navigation, which is uh, embedded in all the pages of my websites uh, through, the, through the include. And uh, another nice feature which uh, Jekyll has is the possibility of previewing uh, a website before deploying it. Uh, and, uh, but then Emacs also has got a node which allows you to uh, lo launch a web server. And uh, in fact, uh, I wrote a quick hack um, which allows you to, which allows to basically invoke a node on a, on, on a org mode project and start a local preview and then uh, uh, use our sync in order to deploy the, the website. Um, yeah. Five minutes left. Okay. Okay. More than, uh, than enough. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I'm nearly done. So then I can take some some questions. So okay, just to give you maybe a slightly more in depth uh, view of what the pages look like. So these are uh, one of the pages uh, or the source files um, of uh, one of the, uh, the websites. Uh, it is uh, in literate programming. So basically, uh, uh, you see there is some metadata here. I mean, these are regular org mode file. And um, uh, this part here uh, um, basically defines some uh, common options for publication. And uh, these two uh, includes here um, puts some extra HTML in the head part and uh, uh, the navigation. And here, as you can see, is the code uh, generating the, the list in chronological order. It is slightly more complex than the example I made in the slide because uh, there is some more elaboration to, uh, to do, including putting some JavaScript to hide and show according to, let's say, the, the tags. So to go back to the, to the presentation, um, so the, okay, so I, I managed this migration a, a few months ago, and then uh, all my workflow is within, with org mode and within Emacs, and um, I'm very happy with it because uh, it simplified uh, quite a bit, let's say, my public, publication process. And uh, one of the advantages, so another advantage, so the first advantage is that everything is in org mode and Emacs. Second advantage is that um, everything is based on the standard, standard machinery provided by org mode. So in a sense, it is kind of, let's say, more robust to respect to uh, dependencies and possible errors and so on and so forth. And, um, and the fact that the org mode allows you to publish uh, a single file in a project is, is also very interesting because uh, um, it allows uh, to, let's say, be more robust to uh, problems you might introduce when uh, um, you're changing, uh, when I'm changing the setup. And another interesting thing which I realized uh, I, um, I could have is that, in a sense, the specification of the website is, uh, can be embedded in the website itself. So, in a sense, this is some kind of, let's say, self-document, it's a way of self-documenting uh, what I'm actually doing. So, for instance, uh, uh, here on my uh, website, uh, you can see, let's say, the specification of the, of the, of the project, which is uh, loaded from my initialization file, but then it is also published uh, together with my home page and it lives with the repository where I keep all the sources of my uh, website, uh, which is kind of nice because uh, it uh, basically isolates everything in a single, in a single pl uh, place. Okay, so there are some examples. Uh, I'm showing them more because of the, let's say, source code, which uh, you can grab from the uh, Git repositories, if you are interested, of course, I'm also available to 
provide some support and help if you are in, interested in this kind of stuff. Uh, the, um, the next step for me will be that of, let's say, trying and making this kind of machinery available uh, for uh, a more general use. At the moment, uh, if you are interested in trying it out, my suggestion is, let's say, grabbing the sources uh, of one of the, let's say, websites to see uh, what uh, how they look like and, and maybe try and uh, customize it for your uh, uh, purposes. And this is basically the content of my talk, so I'm uh, open to, to questions, and thank you for uh, your attention. You are now unmuted. Uh, thank you very much, Adolfo, for your awesome presentation. Um, I think we have time for m maybe like one or two questions. Um, and then the rest, maybe you could take up um, uh, after the stream. After the stream. Uh, I wish should do. Um, would you like me to read you the questions? Uh, yeah, probably better because I'm, I'm kind of lost. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no problem. Okay. Um, Okay, so someone asks, do you have any opinion on Fern? Fern, I, I don't know Fern, so I give it a try and, uh, and, uh, and, ch and check it out. Okay, thanks. And um, people are also asking, do you discuss this, for example, in a blog or anywhere else they could find more about it? Oh yes, I'm going to publish the um, let's say the talk and the content uh, on the on my website, and then uh, link it from the Emax Conf conference so that it will be easier for uh, people to to reach it. Uh, so I will shortly make it available right after the conference. Uh, wonderful, and I think that's all for the questions. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, and cheers. Bye. Cheers. Bye.